So, welcome to my video channel on YouTube. Uh, I'm just going to start painting today, so I've got my clean water, everything set up, and I'm taking my paint tray that has all my lumpy old watercolors, and I'm just spritzing it with a spray bottle to re-dissolve the paint materials. And you can do this a million times. It just keeps being reused, so there's no wastage. And that's why one of the things I love about watercolors. And make sure I put lots of water in the ones that that have lots of paint in, so I equalize the liquid to paint ratio. Hey, okay. I've been watercoloring for 40 years, and I've figured out my own techniques over time. So some of these things won't be what you see other artists do, but that's the pleasure of YouTube. You can find all kinds of different techniques from different artists and figure out which ones work for you, and then that becomes your style. Just moving my trays over. I have rather a lot of trays because over the years, I've just mixed up new colors and I keep them. So. Sometimes they're ones that I've mixed, and sometimes they're ones that I've bought from different companies. This one's from Beam Paints. A lot of these are Windsor Newtons. Some of them are Daniel Smith. Whatever colors I like, I choose. Now when I start to paint, sometimes work on really small ones like I did yesterday, these, these ones here, and I just work on a small sampling, and then I figure out which ones I like of those, and these two I liked, so I've got them little framed in little frames, so I can just pop those up to remind me of uh, things that worked in my experimentation, and then when I'm ready to go into doing an 8x10 painting in this case, I've got that research information beside me. And re regularly I try to just breathe out and empty my mind and then see what happens. And I work with the brush, holding it not like a pencil, just letting it go. And I always have a really great scratching implement on the back of my brush. Sometimes I scratch dry like this, and sometimes I scratch wet, and they make different results. And if things are getting a little too tight, spray bottle is the best way to deal with that. Especially if you're used to painting with acrylics and then you switch to watercolors and you find your paints are getting just too heavy, too thick. It's kind of like giving you the opportunity to start again. And I'm 
liking this nice combination of colors. I always have two bottles of water, one to wash my dirty brush, and then I dry it off to make sure I've got all the dirt off, and then one to clean, use for clean water to pick up new water, new paint, sorry. Sometimes I scrape off my paint back into the palette again if I like the color that, that I picked up so that I can save it for later. Now when you scratch the paint, um, sometimes the, the fluid drops into those scratches and makes kind of fine line work once it dries. And you can choose where you want those scratches to be to kind of capture the uh, focus of the painting because they'll have a bit more substance to them. Now you can also use, toilet paper is my favorite weapon. Um, you can use toilet paper to dab off areas to make a lighter. It's great for doing clouds when you're doing a cloud area on a blue sky. I want something nice and contrasty now. Let's see. It's really great having the video version of my work because I can see it from a distance and see how it looks as an overall composition. Because when you're really close to a painting, you're kind of in it. You're, you're in the focus. You're looking at all the details. But really, paintings are viewed from kind of back here. So having the opportunity with the video camera to see the work from back here. And if you don't have that option, then step back from your work now and then and give yourself some space to, to assess it from a distance. And for me, a watercolor painting is not over till it's over, but if you get too much paint on there, then yes, it, it can be over a little too soon. And that's when I just spray the water bottle on or I dab off some of it, like I'm gonna do in this case. I wanna make some nice sharp white lines in here or edges. So I'm just squeezing the toilet paper into a sharp edge to make some contrast in there. Okay, let's see. Sometimes a painting needs to dry and then you step back from it and then you go, oh, I could add X, Y, Z. And that comes out later. And this is all in the nice blues and grays and greens. So I think I'd like some complementary opposite just to kick it up a notch. Because compliments, when they're combined in a painting, they kind of electrify each other. So I'm mixing up a, a kind of an orange at this point. Now where to put it? Maybe here. Oh yeah, I like that color in there. Can you see that? Yeah, I'll hold it up. And 
I don't want it to get too carried away, so I'm just keeping my eye on it. And it's getting a little almost complete. I love these soft, subtle colors that come out at the end. Because those tonal ranges that you get from white fading to the almost black in there, that's what makes a painting really sing. Having that lovely contrast, dark to light. Did one little dot of red in there just to test it out. Yeah, maybe three. Three is always a good number. And there, I think it's done. What do you think? I'll show a photograph of it after I've posted the video. Talk to you soon. Have a great week.